that little portion that I read is actually in. Now, the rest of this, we need to get our hands on the actual document because a lot of this may be true, but we need to validate it because it gets in and explains. It is an established fact that the United States federal government has been dissolved by the Emergency Banking Act of March 9, 1933, 48 Stat 1, Public Law 89-719, declared by President Roosevelt being bankrupt and insolvent, H.J.R. 192, 73rd Congress, Session, June 5, 1933. Joint resolution to suspend the gold standards and abrogate the gold clause dissolving the sovereign authority of the United States and the officials' capacity of all United States government offices, officers, and departments, and is further evidence that the United States federal government exists today in name only. Now, this is where this H.R. 13955 comes in under public law, that where it goes in addresses the United States Secretary of Treasury receives no compensation for representing the United States. This has been turned over to the governors of international monetary funds. Okay, the next, the next paragraph of that reads... The receivers, which means that it's been in, put into receivership, okay? When it's put into receivership, which is a nice word for bankruptcy, a person who is a receiver is the one who has to handle the payments of all of the debts, okay? So, so, that's, why, so that's why Bush made that comment that the Constitution gets a piece of paper. That's exactly right. Okay, right, so, me, so is there anything in there? Okay, so nothing was filed in the in the so-called U.S. Supreme Court all this was done through the Senate and House. Well, hold on. H hold on, Carl. Hold on, okay? We, we, we got some more stuff here to go into. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like I said, you guys, you need to strap on your seatbelt and put on a helmet tonight. Okay? The receivers of the United States bankruptcy are the international bankers. Okay? That means they're handling the debts and the payments of all accounts. All of it. They're, they are responsible to make sure that everybody gets paid. Okay? doesn't mean Rob has to do it. Okay, via, okay, I'm going to read this again. The receivers of the United States bankruptcy are the international bankers via the United Nations, the World Bank, and the International Monetary Fund. Okay? What year was this bankruptcy, Rod? 1933. Okay. When was the United Nations established? 1945. Okay. 1945 and 1933. So the United Nations was established 12 years after the bankruptcy. Is that correct? That's what it says. Well, I can smell a rat from here, folks. Now, all United States offices, officials, and departments are now operating within a de facto status in name only under emergency war powers with a constitutional Republican form of government now dissolved the receivers, again, that's the person who has to accept and pay all of the debts of the bankruptcy, have adopted a new form of government for the United States. This new form of government is known as a democracy, being established socialist communist order under a new governor for America. This act was instituted and established by transferring and or placing the office of the Secretary of Treasury to that of the Governor of the International Monetary Fund, Public Law 94-564, page 8, section HR 13955, reads in part, the U.S. Secretary of Treasury receives no compensation for representing the United States. Okay, now, let's step back here because when we got into this, and Jeanette and I started looking at this, <laughs> it, 
And it started saying receivers are the international backers. You're getting my blood pressure up. Cool. I love it. <laughs> receivers are the, are the United States are international backers via the United Nations. This was done in 1933, people. We pulled and we talked about the U.N. not coming into foundation until October 24th, 1945. That's 12 years later, folks. That means this bankruptcy is all fraud and it doesn't exist. Here's, here's the next paragraph, okay? You need to pay attention to this because it gets worse. Gold and silver were such a powerful money during the founding of the United States of America that the founding fathers declared that only gold or silver coins can be money, that's in quotation marks, in America. Since gold and silver coinage were heavy and inconvenient for a lot of transactions, they were stored in banks, and a claim check was issued as a money substitute. People traded their coupons as money or currency, okay? Currency is not money but a money substitute. Redeemable currency must promise to pay a dollar equivalent in gold or silver money. Federal Reserve notes, FRNs, make no such promises and are not money. A Federal Reserve note, FRNs, um, is a debt obligation of the federal United States government, not money, the federal United States government and the U.S. Congress were not and have never been authorized by the Constitution for the United States of America to issue currency of any kind but only lawful money, gold and silver. Excuse me, gold and silver coin. Okay? So, 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 so the banks created the bankruptcy and then <laughs> shot Kennedy. They, well, actually, the, the paper I'm putting out now explains that part in, in more detail. What they have done is they overthrew the constitutional form of government in the United States, the republic, made it a democracy, which is a capitalist, fascist, socialist government, in order for them to take over the world. Now, Rod had a really good question today, Rod. Oh, if the you know, States, remember, people, we read up here that, Mr. Speaker, we are now in Chapter 11, members of Congress, are official trustees presiding over the greatest reorganization of any bankruptcy in the world history, the United States government. Okay, people, they didn't say corporation. They said government. What is government made up of? Stop and think here. Don't think corporation. Government is what? It is elected people into a public office to sit down and be employees of the people. Employees. How can employees sit here and file bankruptcy on a government that when you have natural resources at your beck and call, such as gold, because it says gold, because gold had to be turned in, silver had to be turned in, we have oil, we have coal, we were one of the leading farming nations for feeding the world. Okay, not only are these natural resources, but the word that's operative in the bankruptcy is the word asset. Okay, the natural resources were considered assets. Furthermore, how can they name themselves as trustees when they're a part of the bankruptcy? Uh, good question. Now, Chapter 11, under, if you get into tax laws, get into Chapter 11. What is Chapter 11? Chapter 11 is a corporate reorganization and bankruptcy. Corporate, business. Not government. That's right. Okay, Chapter 11. A Chapter 11 case begins with the filing of a petition with the bankruptcy court serving the area where the debtor has a domicile or resident. 
Okay, if the government filed bankruptcy, the government was the debtor. All right? A pet- now, a petition may be voluntary petition, which is filed by the debtor, or it may be involuntary petition, which is filed by creditors that meet certain requirements. 11 U.S.C. 301 and 303. A voluntary petition must adhere to the format of Form 1 of the official forms prescribed by the Judicial Conference of the United States. Unless a court order otherwise, the debtor must also file with the court. Okay, everything is with the court. This is what we're getting into. How could an executive order declare bankruptcy then, uh, chapter 11 for have government. Roosevelt go to Congress and says, okay, I did an executive order, create a law to cover my butt, but there has not been a court hearing that we are know, that we know of, or has anybody's ever talked about, of any paperwork being proven that this was an actual Chapter 11 that had to go into a court and if what they are saying back here is that this thing went into the international bankers, which went into the World Court in the UN in 1933, and the UN did not become a foundation until 1945, what World Court did they take it into? Or what court did they take it into? Well, okay. uh, uh, part of that, my thought pattern is, see that, the, okay, well, stop, stop and think about this twist. Impeachments. <laughs> okay, no, I, this gets worse, folks. I, I'm just gets... hanging myself, but let's go ahead, let's talk about it. Go ahead, Jeanette. Well, it, it gets worse that if, if it was the United States that filed bankruptcy, and it was a Chapter 11, and they appointed the international bankers as, what were they, the receivers or the trustees? Regardless, it doesn't matter. It's a moot point. If they, are, if they are the international bankers, Rod's question was, if the United States filed bankruptcy, then so did the other countries. Well, lo and behold, I found a document today that shows that they did and I'm still trying to find that, Rod. I'm still, you know, like I said, I've been really busy on this today. Um, whatever I put that out on, here we go. Uh, here we go. Information 2040 bank holiday. Well, here we go. Uh, in 1933, the year most Western world nations were forced into bankruptcy. That makes that an involuntary bankruptcy, okay? Proclamation 2040 bank holiday. Franklin D. Roosevelt. Okay, now this says, whereas on March 6, 1933, I, Franklin D. Roosevelt, President of the United States of America, by proclamation declared the existence of a national emergency and proclaimed a bank holiday extending from Monday the 6th of March to Thursday the 9th of March, 1933, both dates inclusive. In order to prevent the export, hoarding, or earmarking of gold or silver coin, or bullion, or currency, or speculation in foreign exchange, and whereas under Act of March 9, 1933, all proclamations heretofore or hereafter issued by the President pursuant to the authority conferred by Section 5B of the Act of October 6, 1917. Rod, what Act of October 6, 1917 is he referring to? It went right back into the Trading with the Enemy Act when they went into Germany and told Germany, if you're going to create a war, the Federal Reserve told them, you have to use our currency to continue your war. Okay, and as of the Act of October 6, 1917, notice they intentionally excluded what act they were talking about. Okay? Trading with the Enemy Act. Oh, right, and they left that out on purpose, so any exclusion of a contract that doesn't show the whole thing makes the whole thing void. As amended or approved and confirmed, and whereas said national emergency still continues 
And it's necessary to take further measures extending beyond March 9th, 1933, in order to accomplish such purposes. Okay? Now, therefore, I, Franklin D. Roosevelt, President of the United States of America, in view of such continuing national emergency and by virtue of the authority vested in me by Section 5B of the Act of October 6, 1917, 40 Stat L 411, as amended by the Act of March 9, 1933, do hereby proclaim, order, direct, and declare that all terms and provisions of said proclamation of March 6, 1993, and the regulations and orders issued thereunder are hereby continued in full force and effect until further proclamation by the President. Okay, now, remember, we went back in and we talked about Title 12, United States Code 95B, enactment of the President and United States Treasury. All right, whenever they sit down and did the Trading with the Enemy Act under under Title 12, 95A, which is Trading with the Enemy, when they did the 95B, they switched everything over to the United States Treasury, which went into the Comptroller. Now, remember, they're sitting here talking Federal Reserve notes, and we got into this under Title 12, I believe it was 411 and 412, that sit here and show that Federal Reserve notes only had one single purpose, and that was to stay within the Federal Reserve banking system, and it was not to come out here to the people unless it was for the federal agents of that time to to deal with it, to carry it from one bank to the next. Okay. On your... Uh, hold on a minute. On your dollar bill, on your $20 bill, it sits here and says, this note is legal tender for all debts, public and private. What's a private debt? 